So I want to thank everybody for taking the time to be here today. I'm going to show you something that's, that's kind of new, and um, it's something that's right inside of PowerPoint, and it's something called PowerPoint Mix. And I'll go through, you know, what is Mix? I'll start talking about that. And then I'll also talk about how to get your Mix loaded, how to get Mix loaded into your PowerPoint. I'll go through the process of that. And then it's going to create a new tab in PowerPoint. And then um, I'm going to go through the steps of creating the first mix. I'm not sure how well it's going to come across on a webinar, um, but I think it'll be um, give you enough information, um, and, and, and hopefully it'll show it. And then how to upload your mix. And then lastly, talk about accessibility with the mix and what that does. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start sharing my desktop. And I want to make sure that you all can see the desktop. Can everybody see my desktop? I just want to make sure. It's right here. You should see something that says PowerPoint Mix. Beautiful. Wonderful. <clears throat> so what is Mix? Well, first, the easiest way to put it is right here. Mix is a free add-on. And what an add-on in PowerPoint is just simply another tab that extends your use of PowerPoint. But it allows you to create uh, video, voice, and digital ink, uh, polls and interactive apps, eh, so, sort of, um, insights and analytics. I'm not going to get into the polls and interactive apps. Um, and then you can play back on any device. Um, and so that's what Mix is. It's, it's a very easy way for you to create and share um, narrated PowerPoints in a sense. You can get a little interactive with it, but this is just makes it an, an easy solution if you already have PowerPoints to give the PowerPoint a little bit more um, usefulness when it comes to using uh, narrating that. So um, what I'm going to show you is um, how to go about and and get the mix onto your PowerPoint. Oh, I forgot to mention. So the one other thing that's real important um, to realize with this is that the Office Mix can only be used on the uh, PowerPoint for the PC. So if you have Office 2016 for the Mac, Mix does not work. Um, it does not have. It does not do the same thing. Uh, you also must have Office 2013 or Office 2016. It, can't, it does not work on an earlier version. And one of the things that I think is important for you all to understand is that I don't know if you all realize that every single one of you has access at home or on your work computer to load Office 2016 without having to wait for anybody to get it to you. And I really do recommend you getting Office 2016 for a, a number of reasons. One is this mix. But there's some other features in there that are real nice. So one of the things you may not realize is that if you come, you know, go to the single sign-on and you click on your email, it'll take you out to your Outlook. <clears throat> and there's a little big button that says Office 365. So if you click Office 365, you're going to see this says install Office 2016 on your PC. Now, I would certainly uncheck these two things, but just click Install Now, and you will then have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and OneNote. You may never use Excel. You may never use OneNote, but at least you have Word and PowerPoint for Office 2016. This is, Office, this is a subscription based that's free to all faculty and to all students. So you don't have to wait for anybody to go ahead and... Uh, get that installed. And again, it will be Office, 3, Office 2016. So <clears throat> to begin with, to get your mix, to get mix on your, on your PowerPoint, and let me just bring up PowerPoint, and you'll see I have already have it on here. But when you come in to PowerPoint, you, know, you have all these tabs. You won't see a mix tab until you go out to mix.office.com. Hey, Alan. Yes. Um, is that the Office only for PCs, or is that for Mac also? 
Office two. No, that Office is for Mac also. Right. So if you have a Mac and you go into uh, you, it's, I'm I'm on I'm on my Mac, but I'm using Parallels, which allows me to use Windows. So um, I'm in my Windows environment. But if I was on my Mac environment in Chrome, when I go to the Office three sixty five tab, it would have uh, install Office two two sixteen on your Mac. But you should know that they are not the same product. They don't. They look similar, but they're still very different than the way it works on a PC. And again, as I said, Office Mix will only work on Office 2013 or 2013 16 for the Mac. I'm sorry, <laughs> for the PC, not for the Mac. So Lori is asking, can we install this on two different PCs? And the answer is yes. With Office 365, I believe you're allowed up to five computers. I believe that what, what you're allowed on Office 365. So let me go and type in HTTP mix. I'm typing this into the chat so you'll have it. So if you go to mix.office.com, and you click on this button that says, get your office mix. And then it'll ask you to log in to your Microsoft account. What's really nice here is the second one, which says sign in with a work or school account, which is what we're going to do. This will take me out. OK, so let me go back. Normally, let me, let me log off here, because I'm already logged in. So normally, if you're logged off, and let me go back here and get mix. Ah, let me log off here. <laughs> Normally, you're going to be brought to the place where you'd have to use your username and password. And again, it's your it's our single sign-on. So I'm going to use my single sign-on because you already have a Microsoft account with our single sign-on. And I just go there. It goes there, you just download this office.mix.setup.exe file, and you just double click on it, and, go, and it'll go through the process of installing. That's what it'll do. Once it installs, and you bring up PowerPoint, and then you, bring, and you have to start a presentation, you will then have a tab on there that will say Mix. So again, let me just... Go through that process. It's a one-time thing, mix.office.com. You click on Get Office Mix. You sign in with your school account. Changed my password this morning, so I have to remember that. It'll automatically go and download. You go and save that. You click on that. And you have to have Word, and I already have it installed. You uh, then click Install. It'll go through the install process. And then you bring up PowerPoint. Again, PowerPoint for the, Mac, for the PC 2016 or 2013. I prefer 2016 these days. And you will then have a new tab on there that says Mix. Okay. Any questions about that? I will take silence is a good thing. So let's talk about what's on the Mix tab. So the biggest and the most important one I think that you're going to be using most of the time is slide recording. And that's the one that I'm going to spend time on in creating what they, what, what's called a Mix. Essentially, this allows you to record your screens, um, to uh, annotate them with ink, if you so desire, and then um, have a webcam if you want. You can use webcam. And then very easily then take that and plop it up to your mix area. Because once you create, once you have your account, which you already do, you can go ahead and upload this to your mix. And that's that mix.office.com area. And then it then gets encoded and then you can, it's, and it's up in the cloud and you share it. And I'll show you what that all looks like later on. So that's the most important one. This interesting one, which is quizzes video apps, 
If you click on this, there's some other lab add-ons. I had some issues getting these on to my, uh, I wanted to put one on here, but you'll notice where I can put a multiple choice quiz or a multiple response uh, poll or a true and false. I had a little problem with it today when I went to trust this and then it asked me to log in, I think, right there. And it says to sign into the Office Store with your Microsoft account. And when I did this, it wouldn't, it wouldn't recognize my Office account. So this is one of those things that, um, again, I, we'll have to try this later. See, that doesn't work. So I think I have one, which is, so that's not good. That, and, oops. So I'm not going to, I wouldn't get into, um, I can't even remember what I did here. Yeah. So that's the sign in, supposedly. I'm really not going to get into the, the quizzing end of things here. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's, you know, I mean, that's a useful thing, but again, not going to get into that right now. Uh, the screen recording, this is kind of cool uh, because, you know, we have uh, Camtasia. Uh, you can go by Snagit. We talk about capture. But right within PowerPoint, you can now click on this and highlight an area and say, I'm going to go ahead and it's going through a screen recording. So it's a screencast. Hello, hello, screencast here, screencast here. What am I doing? I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And then it places it right into the PowerPoint recording. So it's a screencast. Hello, hello, screencast here, screencast here. What am I doing? So this is kind of cool because without, you know, using any other thing but PowerPoint, you can now add screencasts to your PowerPoint. You can then also, um, you know, save those videos and you can style them and trim them. You can do various things with them. So that is a really interesting little cool thing that's on the Mix tab. But I will tell you also what's interesting is that if you have Office 2016 for the PC, you actually have screen recording right on there, even if you don't have the mix, which is kind of cool. Um, a screenshot. And again, you also have this on the Insert tab. But I can sit here and do a screen clipping and click and do OK. So And there it puts a little clipping in. Once again, right within PowerPoint. Hey, Alan, we uh, we'll have a question about, from... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. The <laughs> captioning, we'll talk about that at the end. So hold off on the captioning. That's another whole issue. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and close that and shut that down. Again, go back to my mix. Uh, you can insert video, which, of course, you can do on the Insert tab and Insert Audio. It's just the idea of having it within the mix already. Uh, we'll talk about the, the mix, the preview, and the upload, and the My Mixes, and export the video, and some of these things. But this is kind of nice, using mix. If I click that, it actually gives me, in this window, this is something that's interesting in Office 2016, is what's called um, this uh, smart, uh, smart Search, which right within 2016, you can actually see right here. I can do this, click on that, and it actually takes me out and gives you tutorials on how Welcome to use to mix. mix. A powerful add-in that brings interactivity, easy sharing. And this is a mix that they have, that they used. So that's kind of nice that it's right there. All right. So let's get into um, how do you create your mix. And you know, and, and keep in mind, I know I have a whole hour here today. But uh, what I'm trying to show you is, number one, you know, in five minutes, you can get that mix tab onto your computer with PowerPoint and then within five minutes you can have a start doing your first mix it's real simple so I'm not sure we're going to be here a whole hour now in terms of um, doing your mix and in terms of accessibility as Lori and captioning and Lori talked about one of the best things that you can do if you're going to narrate your PowerPoint is to have notes. If you've never noticed, if you've never realized that there's a notes area in PowerPoint, you can have your notes in here of exactly what you're going to say on each slide. And I'll show you why that's a really nice thing when you do your recording. 
but it's also really nice because this can act as your captioning because it because captioning in the in a mix is not a I wouldn't say it's not an easy thing yet I mean hopefully it will get easier but my point is is that you can actually uh, save your do save all of these um, notes into a word document and make that available for the student again it's not the best accommodations but it is reasonable accommodations so I'm going to go ahead and click on this slide recording. So when I click on slide recording, it looks like a weird thing happens. So it takes me into a completely different interface. And hopefully you can see this interface right here. And this is the recording interface. One of the other really nice advantages of having a um, using Mix is that when you're doing recordings, you're doing the recordings on the audio on each individual slide and then if you make a mistake you just forget about it and go to the next slide and then at the end you can come back and edit the recording on that individual slide without affecting the rest of them. For anybody that's used Camtasia for example to try to do a narrated PowerPoint a lot of times you gotta go through the whole thing and if you make mistakes you gotta go back into Camtasia Studio and find what's called markers and it's a, it's a much more difficult process than this is. You'll see right here, I had some notes. So let me close this for a second. Rem let me remind you that I had some notes here. So when you bring your mix up, the slide notes are automatically there. Now I can hide them, but when they're up here, they don't get recorded. So what's really nice about having your slide notes is that, that it's, a, it's number one, it's a good script of what you're going to say, and then also, it allows you to see what you're going to what you want to say without you having to try to remember it which is really kind of nice you'll also notice right over here you can have a video if you want I can turn on my camera hi I don't know how well that comes through across the web but you see I'm in my office am I looking good <laughs> oh, oh good thank you um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for now, but you can have, so, you know, it's kind of weird when it comes to, um, especially in online classes, you know, students like to see your face. I, I don't know why they do. So isn't, wouldn't it be kind of cool to have your webcam working side by side with your, uh, with your narrative PowerPoint? One thing that's real important right here is your um, microphone. You notice that it's showing going up and down. If you are talking and you don't see that going up and down, don't start your, uh, your PowerPoint mix here because that's not a good thing. You want to make sure you have sound. And you'll notice right here it shows the different kinds of, of microphones I have. Now to be quite honest, I'm going to turn on my webcam for a minute. Um, when you're doing these, it's a real good idea to have a headset with a directional mic that's right in your mouth right, in your mouth right there. Um, it, it makes it sound more professional um, because if you're using the, the computer's um, <clears throat> microphone, it, it will be, it, the sound won't be as good. It may be tinny and this, and so you want really good sound. So a, a good pair of um, USB headset is what you want. And what you want to do is you put that you connect the headset before you bring up the mix, before you bring up the recording, because it wouldn't. If you, if I put this in now, I wouldn't see it in the list. And then again, you want to make sure that the correct microphone is chosen. Then you also have ink here. <clears throat> now I'll show you what what's interesting. And let me go back here. Oops, wrong place. Sorry, you didn't want to see the giraffes. So, uh, let me go back to Office Mix. One of the things they're showing in this little video up here is a little stylus. So Mix is really made very nicely um, for um, a touch or for a stylus because I can click on one of these. This is a medium pen and click on a green and, you know, I'm not started, but I can actually now draw on my um, when I'm doing my recording. Um, you'll see right here, next slide, and then preview the slide. So that's how I moved.
between slides. If I happen to have any animations, the animations, I would click on next animation. So in other words, if I had something flying in or you know, moving around, I can actually have those animations as part of my mix. So I'm going to go ahead and click on record. You'll notice what happens is I get what's called the marching ants. So I know this is being recorded and I have my notes up here. And again, I have right here where I can show the slide notes or take them away. And I can say, here's what I have some notes. And this is a presentation about PowerPoint. And it's a wonderful thing what PowerPoint is. And I can take toggle between the screens here so I can see things. And then I can move on to the next slide. And there I have some more notes on that slide, as you can see. And again, I can change the color and change the ink and do that. I can go up here and get rid of it. And then I can go to the next slide and say, hey, and if I you know, want to cough or there's, you know, somebody's coming to my door, you know, I can pause it in where I'm at. And then I can go ahead and click on record to continue. And again, this is a great another slide and, and so on. And I can move on and move on until I'm done. So that's how simple it is to create a mix. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And what it's done now, it's on slide four. It shows me I've done, I've done eight seconds. Um, and I can go to the previous slides. And then I can actually preview the slide. You'll notice what happens is I get what's called the marching ants. So I know this is being recorded. And I have my notes up here. And again, I have right here where I can show the slide. Isn't that cool? So that's that slide. And you know what? I made a mistake. So I can trim the recording. I can delete it. Or I can just simply go back to this slide here and click on record because I have to re-record the sound and go, well, I made a lot of mistakes on that slide. And this is really what I wanted to say. I really wanted to say, Hello to everybody with my little smiley face because it's a happy day, big ears, and so on. <laughs> and if I go ahead and stop that, you'll get this little um, dialog box that says slide one has a recording on it. Would you like to overwrite it? Well, yeah, I do because I made a mistake. Now, this won't affect any of the other slides. So if I go to the next slide, on to the next slide. And there, I have some more notes on that slide, as you can see. And again, I can change the color. So again, what's really nice about this is that I can have a full set of, 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 of slides and audio on all of those slides. And then, oh my god, I get a new edition of my book, or whatever, and I wanted to do a new PowerPoint. I can bring up my, that, that, new, that, that mix from the previous PowerPoint insert the new slides and go to that slide and do the recording on that slide and that slide only and the rest of the mix is is safe so honestly that's all there is to how you would do recordings um let me go let me just go um where there is an animation and that's right here so let me go right here and let me do a recording and you'll notice where it says i can't move to the next slide right here. Let me go back to full screen here. Because there's an animation. Once I do the animation, I can go to the next slide. So that's just one of the things to keep in mind, that if you happen to have animations inside of your slides, you have to use the animations. Then I can go to the next slide, and so on. I'll go ahead and stop that. And that's how easy it is. Any questions about how you do a recording? using mix hopefully this is pretty simple right all right I guess it's all good so when I'm all done I simply click close so now how do I get that mix to where I can then share it well it's a very simple process See, it says Upload to Office Mix. You click. Well, I mean, I can go through a whole preview and if I, I want. I can go to the next slide and so on. And this is just the slides. I can go back. Then I can go to the next slide. So I'm ready to go ahead and preview this. And I previewed it. There's that wonderful slide. I'm going to go ahead and upload it to Mix. So I click Upload to Mix. I'm going to click Next. 
what it's doing is preparing it in the background and loading. I'm going to sign in with my work account. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And I think I got canceled for some reason. Let me try it again. Next. I think I typed in my password wrong. There we go. So there's one important step in this. You'll notice where I'm uploading a new mix or I'm updating an existing mix. So if you have one that you've already have up there and you're going to update it, in other words, you've added another slide, another video, or whatever you've done, you can update it. This is real important to enable playback on mobile devices. I don't know why it's not checked by default, but you want to make it so that students can see it on their mobile devices. I'm going to click Next, and it's going to go through, and it's like watching paint dry. It's going to go ahead and export the video. Depending on how long your video was and what you did, this may take a few minutes. So while this is uh, watching our paint dry, any, any questions at this point? I see Beth is typing. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, this could take pl the place of uploading to YouTube. It's a similar kind of process. I'm going to go ahead to my mixes. Sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead to my mixes. And the answer is yes. As long as it's a PPTX, if you have an old PPT, you save it as PPTX in 2013 or 2016, and then you load the mix, and the answer is yes. So what happens when you upload it to, to the mixes, it comes up to my mixes here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on details. And normally it'll come into a, a place like this. So here you'll notice this is similar to like YouTube in that it, it, you can put a title in, um, you can choose permissions, you can make it private, you can make it to the organization, you can make it limited or unlisted or share it out to the world. So it's similar in that, in like YouTube, usually we keep things unlisted, you can let people um, modify and share into Creative Commons, you can allow comments of this, and then this gives you an example of a mix, and then this is where you can watch it. So let me show you what a mix looks like. This is what the mix interface looks like. There is closed captioning. There is, this is what's really nice, a table of contents. So a student can very quickly. So we know what the Quality Matters rubric is. I'm going to go ahead. They can scrub through very quickly and easily. They can use the table of contents. Have. They can Subjects have. They can is go darts. this way. Uh, they can go full screen. And it looks what they wonderful. did, and again, getting the table of contents. I'm going to go ahead and just skip these. So the navigation of a mix, and we taught, and you should know the community of, oops, is is very easy. Sorry about that. Alan Carlos has a question: Can the mix be saved to a local drive and then shared on other cl cloud storages? Uh, yeah, you can download the video. So it's it, yes. So what what's important there is um, that step that I had when we were creating the mix. See, it's still going through the process where it said where you had the checkbox to make it for a mobile device. Um, that's where uh, you need to do that in order to be able to download it. So if I go back into my mixes here, you'll see where it says video. If I click that. So what I thought I and I stop that and I right click now and save video as there's the MP4. I give it a name, put an MP4, and then you can actually stick it up into YouTube if you want. Now, if you do that, the one thing you will not have is this um, level of um, you know the table of contents. 
so that it's real easy for the students to, to navigate through. So what I thought I would do oh, is... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wish it wouldn't start right away. Um, so that's the one I just did. You'll see. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But the other thing you have in here, um, let me go ahead and put it out here and go ahead and save. Uh, you can email it to somebody. The sharing, where you can share out to uh, social media. But you can also do the embed, which is always my recommendation than using this link, you know, where I would be able to choose that and copy that, go out to my courses, and go into a course or content, new. Create a file, my mix. I could use the HTML, but I can go right into my insert stuff. And I'm going to um, enter embed code, paste that in, next. Oh, I got to tell uh, Jamie about that. And there it is, and then publish it out. And there's your mix. So what I thought I would do is to kind of go through um, the slide. So that's the mix that's out on, you know, in your course. That's how easy it is to get it out in your course. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, and the other thing you get with the My Mixes, by the way, um, are analytics. So if I go back to My Mixes and I click on Analytics, this gives you an idea of not only overall, you know, you can look at it by visitors, how many visitors have been there. If you have um, any interactive stuff by exercises, uh, but you can actually look at it by slide. And if I click on the More here, you can actually see, you know, who is actually viewing it. I don't know that you would see it, you know, if the students' names would be in there. So you can see which ones are viewed most. You know, this can give you some information, you know, about, you know, if, if you have a particular PowerPoint that you have out there that students, um, students can, um, or you'll be able to look at what, maybe which slides the students are spending the most time on. And maybe that's because that seems to be the most, you know, difficult subject in the area there. I'm trying to look at this, the question soon. Um, so no, no. So let me go back up here to my mix here. And I know it didn't look like it had every functionality, but it is right down there. So there is the full functionality when you embed the code for the students, as opposed to clicking a link and going out to your mix. And no, Car so the answer, Carlos, is no um, with that, because it, it, you just, you're making the choice um, when you look at the mixes at what level you want your permissions to be. So when I look at the details of this mix, you know, I'm choosing unlisted, which means anyone with the link can view this. They don't have to have an account. Um, so more than likely, when it comes to the analytics in that particular case, um, it will be kind of anonymous as to who's clicking, who's viewing it. But I still think um, I still think it can give you some useful information if you look at the slide again, even if it's anonymous. If you have a lot of anonymous users looking at one slide and spending the most time on that slide. That must be a difficult concept that they're trying to gather. And then you can maybe bring that into the classroom um, with that. So the, the last thing, any other questions that, on this? Right. So the last thing are closed captions. And this is where, honestly, the mix has, you know, it's not, I mean, I think they will get there at some point, like Google, where it's automatic, and then you can make changes to it. 
Right now, they have a link to their knowledge base that um, has missing images. And basically, you enable, to enable the captions, you have to have the enable playback. And then what you would do is download the video and you upload what's called a TTML file. This is a file that I honestly have not heard of before. But it must be a newer file type for captioning. And what you're supposed to do is create that. Well, how are you going to create that? That's the difficult part. You know, what I did with this particular one is I actually downloaded the video. I then actually went out to, uh, and I put it onto YouTube. I know this seems crazy. I put it onto YouTube. This was a long process, a lot, lot more, not a long process. I mean, I know this is always the issue when it comes to um, captioning here. And I went up to here, and I put it up here, and I went to the captioning, and I went through the automatic, and I, and I fixed any of the captions there, and I went to the action, and I downloaded an SRT file. I know, this is crazy. And then I went, SR, S, I went SRT to V, or SRT conversion, And then I did this subtitle converter. I uploaded the SRT and then saved the TM. And I didn't do a great, so I went to the SRT. Oh, I don't have it here anymore. And then I saved it as a TTML, went back and uploaded it. What happened was when I did that, it looks like this. So what I thought I would do is to kind of go through um, the slides that the researchers have provided on a webinar that they did. Unfortunately, the webinar is no longer available. So I think that it's interesting to, to look at the slides. I'm going to try to highlight some of the information that's on the slides. So it messed up some <laughs> with it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. That's the new standard, huh? I liked it when it was SRT. Um, so that's the new standard that they're using for captioning. Here again is what, I, what I'm thinking. If you have the notes, like I told you, and they're pretty good notes that you have out there, and you follow the notes on there, I feel like you can take those notes, put them into a Word PowerPoint or Word document, and put them out there as a, as a transcript. I know it's not the best thing. It's not what um, deaf people like. They like to be able to look at the slides. But you know, this is not this is not a video. I think if it was a video, uh, it would be different. In this case, you're just providing information to the student, and you're talking about what's on the slide. You know, one thing I would certainly never do is put a video inside of a mix because um, it's it's not going to play real well. You know, on the mix. But then I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, and so, yeah, so what Carlos is talking about is going to the file and print. And if you go up here and you go to the notes pages, and you can then print, you'll see the notes there. It'll print the notes and the pages too. Um, there is also a way if you do export, this is a much nicer and easier thing. And if you click create handout, and create handout, and then you do um, notes with the slides on there, or notes on the slides, and you click OK. That is actually taking your PowerPoint, and you'll notice that Word is now blinking. And if I go into it, it'll create. It's creating them as I speak right now. So sorry, it's still working. There we go. So you'll see it creates the slide and the notes right next to it. So that's actually without you really having to think or having to print. You just go to this export, create handouts, create a handout, and then choose what you want. Notes below the slide. You can even have it in an outline format if you want. And that will go automatically into Word, which is kind of cool. 
Uh, I think this is new in 2016, uh, Lori. I believe it's new, but it's a really cool little feature. I love it. I love that feature. Um, so, I mean, that's, so, so yeah, so, so the accessibility piece is a little bit of a challenge, but accessibility piece is always a challenge, but it should not, it should not keep you from doing these particular kinds of things because they really help and enhance your class. They really do. Um, you know, putting up PowerPoints into an online class or into a blended class or into your face-to-face -face class and say, students here, look at this with no background information on it. You know, here's a slide. What does it mean? So having them narrated and having it being done right within PowerPoint really gives you some power. Are there any final questions that you all have? See, great. You know, so the only other suggestion, if if you're interested and maybe want to get some hands-on, one-on-one help, you know, you can always um, request a, a scheduled time with one of us, one of Michelle, Amy, Larry, or I. You know, we'll sit down with you, work out what you want to do, and help you um, learn about this. <laughs> uh, that's a good question, Paul. Um, I would say, depending on what you want to do. So if all you want to do is do a slide recording, like I did, and not to do the quizzing, because I'm, 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 the quizzing in here is, seems to cause, as you saw, seems to be a little bit clunky, um, I would say yes. However, if you want to add quizzes and add um, do some more advanced things, and there is an advanced Camtasia course that I put together, a self-paced course, where you can add call-outs, and you can add zooming, and do all kinds of interesting post-production stuff, then I would say um, use Camtasia. You know, <clears throat> for years, um, and this was one of my other colleagues, used this analogy of, of a tool belt. You know, this is similar to Camtasia, but it's different. You know, they do the same thing. And, I, and when I think about a tool belt, um, I think about uh, a tool belt that has a hammer in it, right? But you can have a mallet. It's a hammer. It does the same thing, but it does it a little bit differently. So that's why I'm going at with this. You know, why would we have this piece, this thing, and Camtasia and Snagit? Well, because they all do the similar things, but there could be different reasons for doing them. All right. Any final questions? I see some eyes. A couple of people are typing. Not good. All right. Thank you, everybody. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop my sharing. I'll stop the recording and I want to thank you all.